dear Sushil, Honorable Minister Balagabad, Vinayaki Chakravarti, Mohan, Krishna Kumar and Gobam. I have practically very little to add to the suggestions made as to how we should approach the horizontal distribution of resources by the Finance Commission. So let me harp upon an issue which troubled me very much, made me very apprehensive of what is going to happen when the 15th Finance Commission terms of reference will be. Jab, sir, um, I think you have much more inside information and perhaps could uh, correct me if I'm wrong. But given the terms of reference of the 15th Finance Commission, which also focused upon fiscal stability, look at the references that uh, pricing of utilities uh, to consider what should be done with the populist schemes how do you define populist and so on and so forth the issues related to sound finance what and got in the constitution has been extended so much and given the inclinations of the chairman, I was really afraid a disaster was going to fall upon the <laughs> states. Frankly, I think COVID saved the states. If you read preview of uh, FRBM committee report, by N.K. Singh. The suggestions are very drastic. Reduce the fiscal deficit ceiling from 3 to 2. 1.75 for the states, not 2. 1.75 for the states. Debt GDP ratio to be reduced to 25. 20, yeah, 20. And to do that, it means absolute reduction. And government of India have publicly accepted that even started implementing some of the things. And my suspicion, that's why I said uh, you know better, but our suspicion, let me put it that way, was that the 15th Finance Commission was going to be an instrument to implement the recommendations of the FRPM Review Committee. That would have been disastrous for the states. But you had COVID, and that is the last period, <laughs> at least <laughs> can use it time to speak about fiscal squeeze and so on and so forth when the fiscal deficits are going on. And that's why I said I firmly believe states were saved by COVID. Now the same government is going to set the terms of funds for the 16th Finance Commission. The agenda wouldn't have changed. If anything, it would have become more stern. And therefore, to protect the fiscal space of the states, think of a 2% fiscal ceiling. What are you going to do? I mean, at least there is a Commission which has recommended that and it was being discussed. In fact, Kerala went all out. We had four seminars, national level, on these issues related to terms of food. We had a book out on the basis of these discussions. Of course, the change in the mind was not made because of the pressures, but because of COVID. But I think this is the real danger that the states in India are facing. 
the vertical imbalance from the center, the asymmetry between the center and states, vertical imbalance between the center and states. How would the terms of funds approach it? And we should raise it among the states. This is an issue where all states can come to. The moment we go into horizontal distribution issue, each state has its own stand on it. But this is an issue that we can rally the states in India. And that's, I think, very, very important. Regarding the horizontal distribution, what should be the most appropriate criteria for, uh, for Kerala, very good. And in fact, it's very exhausting. Everybody has seen that our focus would have to be on the special grants. Whatever we do with this per capita income, our uh, share is very unlikely to go up. Except what the uh, actor said. No, immigration, yeah, go and use it. Immigration, yeah. <laughs> this morning I was talking to Dina Raina about that. Um, in fact, Dina Raina was saying that. Maharashtra, the immigration is settled in the ghettos and uh, slums and so on, and houses are numbered, therefore there is no population decline there, but in fact increase. While the census of powers completely leaves out the immigrants to Kerala, which is very substantial. This is the same case with uh, Tamil Nadu. Now, suggestion made by Inaki, how to factor in the migrant population within the state into the devolution scheme is something which Kerala can possibly gain. So I don't want to go now. I accept um, the suggestions made here. All that I would add is there are a whole lot of things given the inclination of the person regime, which just doesn't accept cultural diversity, forget about the development the <laughs> autonomous part. So, the, it goes against the notion of nation and therefore there is this big danger and in that I think there is a lot of commonality between the states which should be brought together. Thank you very much. Now, just a word, because I am the last speaker. This seminar has been very, very fruitful. Um, there have been genuine debates. That's something that rarely happens. Because uh, mostly people of the same left thinking would gather together, they complement each other and be polite. And go. But in this seminar, on certain issues uh, regarding the state borrowing, offered budget borrowing and so on. There have been very frank statements and debates and discussions. Now, on the basis of discussions here, we'll be preparing a document as an outcome of the seminar. In October 2024, there will be International Congress on Kerala Studies, 5th edition. And this conclusions of the uh, seminar, of course, with reference to all the papers presented here, would be presented there. As I told you, there were 20 conferences of this time. This is perhaps the smallest. There's a much larger, 1,000, 2,000 persons participating. And uh, you see, this exercise then would mean Something like 25,000 persons would have participated in different discussions, conversations. So 10,000 written presentations made. The importance is the final document that will be prepared will be owned by a large section of Kerala's intelligentsia. That was something they have contributed to. Today. That's the idea why you want to organize all this. Because this new path of development that we want to embark upon requires a much higher level of consensus within the state. 
and this is the one way of creating that consensus so thank you very much for everybody who has come and uh, in fact actively participated